What's up guys, Chase Oliver here, bringing you another video to the channel. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a question, has WWE failed Roman Reigns? This was a question brought up by James Williams from We Are Pro Wrestling, shout out to him on Facebook. And of course, when I have my Roman Reigns radar on tact, I was like, dee, dee, dee. I see a Roman Reigns status on Facebook or Twitter. I got to get my keyboard ready to talk about it. And of course, you know, everyone else in that status, they were leaving like nice little, yeah, WWE has failed Roman Reigns. They were just leaving the, the simple answer. Of course, I had to dive in deep on that stuff. I, I had to, I think I like left like a eight to 10 sentence paragraph about how the WWE has failed Roman Reigns and how WWE has just done, didn't do it right with Reigns at all. Because when you look at Roman Reigns, it's just kind of like sad. It's like he should be the top guy, but he's not the top guy. He's just a guy. I've said this in many other videos where he's just a guy. He's just not someone who is the top guy. He's just a guy that is a part of the roster, just like any other guy on the roster. He's just more of a good hand. Because... When I think of a top guy, it's kind of funny when you when people say, oh, I can't believe Reigns is shoved down our throats. Oh, Reigns is always in the main event. Reigns is this, Reigns is that. And I say to myself, well, when's the last time Reigns has held the world title? Because Reigns hasn't held the world title since 2016. 2016. Think about John Cena. If John Cena didn't hold the title for two years when he was on top, that would be ridiculous. That is why when people say Reigns is a Vince's boy or this is Vince's pet project, I always tell them, no, this is a Triple H boy because if this was a Vince boy, oh, Reigns would be an eight-time world champion. Don't at me on that. You know that would be true. Reigns would have beaten Lesnar by now. Vince doesn't really like Reigns as much as you think he does. It's because his son-in-law, Triple H, believes in this guy so much. I mean, Triple H believes in Reigns so much that Triple H main evented with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 32 and had to give him a 30-minute match just to prove to the point that Reigns is pretty darn good in the ring. And I don't even know if that point got cut across but to people. But when it comes down to it, I'm always tired of hearing people say, oh, you know, yes, Vince makes the final decisions. He is the H-I-N-C of all you see. But when it comes down to it, Reigns is a Triple H boy. There's a reason why I call him a Triple H golden child and not a Vince Breakfast Club member. Because if he was in the Breakfast Club, all oh, Reigns would be a champion by now. Him and Cena at No Mercy would have been for that universal title. Like, come on. You're really trying to tell me that Vince wouldn't have wanted Reigns versus Cena for the Universal title instead of Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar? Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar, yeah, that sounds like a good attraction match, but doesn't really need a Universal title? No. Reigns and Cena, now that's a Universal title match, damn it! So I'm always tired of hearing people say Reigns is a Vince's boy or the memes where Reigns is doing this and Vince is like, ah, in his chair, because it's not true. We all know... Reigns is a Triple H boy, and if you guys do not see that by now, absolutely ridiculous. But nonetheless, right here, when it comes down to it, the WWE has failed with Roman Reigns. And it's sad to say that because here was a guy that had potential to be one of your top guys for the company. Now, would he have been the number one babyface of this current era? It's hard to say. It's really hard to say if Roman Reigns would have been that dude. But it's, it's like when you look at how WWE booked him, Instead of when the Shield broke up and Reigns right away became the, uni the WWE Unified World Champion or whatever they were calling that belt at the time when they had the two world titles, instead of Reigns becoming the champion at Money in the Bank, they went with the typical Cena route. And instead, they were trying to slow burn Reigns versus Lesnar at 31. But it's like, come on, man. You know the fans are not going to sit there and accept that with Roman Reigns, especially because the fans have the mindset that Reigns is going to become the next Cena. You're not going to get fans to buy into this Roman Reigns team. So to get people to get emotionally attached to Reigns right away, you got to hotshot him. It worked with Brock Lesnar. It worked with Randy Orton. Sure, it failed with guys like Jack Swagger and Big Show when he first started out in the WWF. But still, you got to hotshot it. You got to see what you have with him as champion. And even then, if he does have a match with Brock Lesnar, at least then if you see Roman Reigns get taken to Suplex City, there is that mind frame taken away where people are going to say, okay, he's not the next Cena because Cena wouldn't have allowed that in the match because Cena would have been like, nah, Jack, I'm going to put you on the FU and take you down easy, Brock, one, two, three. So then at least people have that mindset taken away from them of Reigns is the next Cena because if you see Reigns just get suplex city over and over again, it would say to yourself, okay, no, Cena would have easily just destroyed Lesnar. No questions asked about it. 
So you would have told a good story there, and then you could have led Roman Reigns saying that he needs to get at Brock Lesnar. How can he do that? He tries to find ways, his ways get thwarted, and then he says to himself, the Royal Rumble, that's how I'm going to do it. Reigns winning the Rumble goes on to face Lesnar at 31. Man, a simple story. It works. You already have Reigns who lost to Lesnar before. We all know that Reigns is not... Reigns is a... Reigns has improved as a performer and an athlete. He's more hungrier than ever because when he first won the title, he wasn't ready to be the champion. Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman told him that. And even then, they still say to themselves, you're still not ready for Brock Lesnar. And then think about the match they had at 31. If you did the SummerSlam match with Lesnar doing Suplex City on Reigns, and then you had the match at 31, how much great greater that match would be? Holy shnikes. Now I get it. Yes, this is armchair quarterbacking here, aka armchair booking. But it's just like saying to yourself, how many of you guys that don't like Roman Reigns sit there and hear that story and say to yourself, huh, that could actually work. Maybe I wouldn't love the dude, but at least I could kind of like it because he's more of a badass. It's not like WWE making me feel sorry for Roman Reigns or trying to prove a point that Reigns can wrestle and Reigns can go. Because that's what WWE does with Reigns. When it's like, oh, the fans are hating Roman Reigns? Put him in a match with Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins and show him that he, he can wrestle still. That way the fans will like him. Oh, Roman Reigns is not doing so hot? Let's put some sympathy on him. Let's make people feel sorry for Roman Reigns. And that's where WWE just doesn't get it. Because when you look at Braun Strowman, Braun Strowman, when he loses a big match, does WWE do it with Braun Strowman where you feel sad for Strowman afterwards? Where you feel bad he didn't win because they make Strowman like it's such a sympathetic goof and he comes out and he cuts a promo afterwards being like, I failed! I'm a loser! Ah! No, no, no. Braun Strowman, he loses a match, he moves on. He still says, I'm not finished with you! I'm gonna kick your ass! Like He, he still has the mindset of, I'm still a monster. Yeah, I may have lost, but that's just one setback. I'm still going to kick your ass. That's why Braun Strowman is, is not like freaking like such a loser character because it's like, hey, at least with this dude, the guy is literally just still an ass kicker. Nothing has changed from him. Nothing has ever changed. He's still a monster among men. Yeah, he may lose, but it's not like WWE is making you feel bad for Braun Strowman because how can you feel bad for a guy that's built like a mountain? And that's the thing with Roman Reigns. When you look at Roman Reigns, there's nothing to feel bad about the guy. He has good looks. He has nice long hair. He looks like a stud. When I see someone that looks like a stud and then they turn out to be a complete loser, it doesn't make me like like that guy a lot more. It makes me say, wow, that's pathetic. I don't know how you guys are on that, but that's how I feel. I feel, man, that's pretty pathetic. I thought this dude was a stud, but it turns out this guy is a big loser. And that's what WWE does with Roman Reigns. They make you feel sorry for him. They put him in situations where you feel bad that Roman Reigns can't get it done. Oh, he won the belt at Survivor Series. Oh, Sheamus cashed in. Don't you feel bad for Reigns, guys? Feel bad for Roman. Okay, here's the thing, WWE. I know Roman Reigns gets an automatic rematch. I ain't going to feel bad for that. You didn't ruin any moment for Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns still won the title eventually. Like, he won the title at Survivor Series. Yeah, Sheamus took it away just like that. But I don't feel that bad for Roman Reigns because when I look at Reigns and I look at Sheamus, I still think Reigns can take Sheamus in a fight. Now, say, for example, if I won the title, because I don't know why people think I'm like six foot two. I'm five foot eight. I'm some little midget, okay? I'm five foot eight and I'm chubby. Say if I just won the title, right? My chubby ass won the title. My chubby ass goes up on the turnbuckle holding the belt. And then Sheamus cashes in and bro kicks me. Then you feel bad because, see, the thing is, when you look at me compared to Roman Reigns, a five foot eight chubby guy, you'll feel a little bit more bad because I have to work harder than most people. I'm not as strong as someone that's bigger than me. When you look at me and Sheamus in a fight in a rematch, do you really think that I have a chance or an opportunity against that dude? No, the dude is a freaking six foot five Irish meathead. He's going to kick my face in. So, yeah, you're going to feel a little bit more bad for me than Roman Reigns when you look at him and say, uh, he could kick Sheamus' ass easy. That's the thing with Roman Reigns. It's like, you can't make us feel bad for Roman Reigns because when I look at Roman Reigns, it's like, this dude could kick the other dude's ass anyways. So how can I feel bad for this dude? How can I sit here and sympathize with this guy? You can't make us sympathize with Roman Reigns. Do you think New Japan, when Okada was losing big matches to Tanahashi and stuff, that they were making us, oh, feel bad for Okada. Okada just lost. No! It was just, they said, Okada just wasn't ready for the big stage. Okada's not ready to be the ace. Okada's not the man yet. They just pretty much told you, Okada's not ready. They weren't saying, oh, 
Feel bad for Okada for not being ready. Feel bad for Okada not being the ace. Did you hear Tanahashi cut a epic promo on him on Wrestle Kingdom telling them he's still not the ace? <laughs> still one of the best promos ever. <laughs> you ain't ready to be the ace, boy. <laughs> but you get the idea. It was just them telling you Okada's not ready. And did Okada cut promos saying, oh... I'm just a loser. Oh, I feel bad. Uh, no, he said, I respect my opponents. My opponents have taught me something. Now it's time for me to get better. I'm going to be better than Mr. Tanahashi one day, and I'm going to beat him at Wrestle Kingdom. Do you think New Japan fans and IWC fans like us that like Tanahashi like him because, oh, they made him a sympathetic character? No. They, we knew Tanahashi's character was a very good prodigal wrestler that had all the talent in the world to be one of the best in the world, but he just wasn't there yet. And now they built him up to the point where he is there. And that's why fans like him. That's why when people compare Okada and Reigns, it's kind of like night and day. Reigns is not booked like, hey, this guy has something to prove. Hey, this guy is a badass that just wants to keep on kicking ass like a Braun Strowman. He's built as... He's a six foot four dude that we have to feel sorry for because WWE feels like to create baby faces nowadays in this company, especially Triple H, that sympathy is the way to go. While Kata has been booked of, hey, this guy is a very good wrestler. This guy has the talent to be the next top guy, but he just can't get it done in the big matches. His head's just not in the right place. And then he kept building himself up and up and up until his head, his mind, and his body was ready to be the top guy. Like, that's the difference between Reigns and Okada. Reigns was never built up like that. It's just more of like, hey, Reigns, feel bad for him. Because like I said, when you look at Okada, if he loses a match to Tanahashi, you still look at Okada and say, well, he still has a chance to maybe beat Tanahashi one day. It's not like Okada is like totally out of the running. Same with Braun Strowman. When you see Braun Strowman lose to someone, you say to yourself, eh, you know, yeah, okay, he got caught. You know, it's it's kind of like in a UFC fight. When you see a big dude get caught or you see a certain fighter get caught, it's just like, okay, the dude got caught. I feel like if they had a rematch again, he still would stand a chance against them. That's what like with Braun Strowman. It's like you look there and you say, okay, yeah, he got caught, but he has a chance. He has a chance to beat this dude in a fight. So that's why you don't feel as bad when Braun Strowman loses. That's why with big guys, when they lose... You don't feel as bad because you say to yourself, okay, well, they can still have a chance. Littler guys, it's a little bit different. You have to book that. It's a whole different aspect when you see a littler guy, a littler guy, littler. That's a weird word. Try to say that again, guys. <laughs> when you see a little guy lose, because when a little guy loses, it's kind of like, okay, do they really have a chance against this dude? Like, it just feels like there's less opportunities, especially in wrestling for little dudes than there are big dudes. And that's why with Roman Reigns, it just feels like WWE has failed him because they really just have booked this guy just to be a sympathetic big dude, and it's just, we can't sympathize with the guy. You can't sit here and tell me there's something to sympathize with Roman Reigns. There's just no way to sympathize with the character. I'm not saying Roman Reigns is a bad wrestler whatsoever. I'm not saying Roman Reigns is the worst thing ever. You guys know me, I'm a Roman Reigns fan. Anyone who's followed this channel might be surprised that I've been giving Braun Strowman credit. Just because I'm not a fan of Braun Strowman doesn't mean I cannot give a guy credit. I give Braun Strowman credit. His character has been really good for the WWE programming. I'm just personally not a fan of it, and that's just my personal preference. You don't have to force me to be a fan. I'm not trying to force you guys to be a Roman Reigns fan. I just want to know the answer to your guys' question. Has WWE failed Roman Reigns? Or has Roman Reigns failed the WWE? I would love to hear your guys' responses in the comment section. Uh, I know video responses are not a cool thing anymore, but if you guys have a video response, that'd be awesome. I just want to know, has WWE failed Roman Reigns? Because personally... I just feel they failed Roman Reigns, and it's kind of time to move on from him as being your next top guy. Because if this guy couldn't win in Saudi Arabia, where the crowd was like fully behind him, and he was supposed that was supposed to be his crowning achievement, then what are you trying to build up this guy for? And what is the point of Roman Reigns? Because right now, you're not really doing a good job. All you're trying to do is make us feel sorry for Reigns, and no one can feel sorry for him. We don't feel sorry for Braun Strowman. We don't feel sorry for Kazakichi Okada. So why should we feel sorry for Roman Reigns? Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you check out We Are Pro Wrestling's channel in the description box down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up. Likes are always appreciated on this channel. I hope we can hit probably like 15 likes on this video. That'd be pretty awesome if we could hit 15 likes. But other than that, thank you all very much for watching this video. Remember guys, just like our champion Brock Lesnar, sometimes you don't have to give a shit in life. And... And...
Yo! Yo!